On this episode, I test ride a BMW 1250 GSA. I get mixed up between the indicator and the horn. Oops, sorry. And I stall it. Ah, oh, shit. Okay, so a very good morning to all the BMW fans out there. I've got a test ride booked for one of the big 1250 adventures. Um, came up online as a, you know, do you want to test ride one of these? I thought, yeah, sure, I'm not going to say no to that. Main reason is actually I'm looking at potentially upping this to an 1150 or an old 1200 or something kind of more affordable in the short term. Be good to try out, you know, a bigger bike, see how I like it and that sort of thing really. I love this bike, it's great, but it's great with me on it. This has got, what, about 50 horsepower. I went over to uh, 1150, probably about 85. So it'd be a good step up. The new 1250s have so got about 130 horsepower or something. And it's not a lot by superbike standards, but it's, it's the torque curve. It's basically flat torque from about 2,000 revs upwards. So you've just got so much torque to play with. With the passenger and luggage, the 650 is a little out of its comfort zone. It's lacking the power a bit and the brakes feel like they're really, you know, they're great with one person on. One person and luggage, no problem. Two people and luggage, uh, yeah, you are pushing it a bit really. Um, technically probably over the weight limit actually, but um, you know, you've got to be a little, little bit careful, you know. So, um, so yeah, I think for the sake of me and Sophie doing some touring and stuff, I think an 1150 or a 1200 would be fantastic. Certainly got hooked on the um, on the BMW GS type bikes. There's no question there. Yeah, I'm gonna test ride one of those just as a, you know, a bit of experience. You know, it's free, so why not? I don't know if they'll let me film and whatever. Like I say, I probably won't be able to put the, the 360 camera on it. I'll just take the helmet one if nothing else. But we'll give it a go. Um, for now, I've got some rattling. I think I know what it is. I've taken the left floodlight off to try and repair it. I've worked out what it is. They're no doubt very skilled. Engineer, technician or whoever in the Far East who put the floodlight together neglected to crimp the wires together. So it's lacking a little bit in the, uh, in the making a good electrical connection department. So I'm just going to take that bolt off, I think. It's down here. Right, let's get a bit of a shift on. I'm meant to be there at 12 o'clock. Ignore that clock there, it's wrong. It's not 20 past five in the morning. Um, I'm meant to be there at uh, 12 o'clock and it's got to be quarter two now and I'm a little way away. So I uh, have to uh, ride like Billio, I think. Yeah, this, I mean, this bike has no problem with torque. It, it's got a good amount of torque in most areas of the rev range. It's got a good bit of power, you know, for one person on it. I think it's just, if you, if you are regularly riding with two, which I am to be honest. Um, you know, if we go out and about somewhere, Sophie normally wants to come, and that, that's great. So it'd be nice to have something that can, you know, really pull very nicely with two of us. And you don't feel like you're putting a bit too much uh, pressure on, you know, when you get to stop like this. You really feel it with uh, with two. You're really pulling on that front brake. They've got about a foot and a half the other side of the car, so they they just could move across and they just don't. In fact, if anything, they're moving more to the left. Just move across, man, I'm not, I'm not. You don't lose out by me getting past, you know? What a pain in the ass this is. No, I'm cooking on the gas now. And he says the brake lights appear. I don't want to go there. I could cut across that. Eventually, I made it to BMW. At this point, I feel I should make it more like a Top Gear road trip by saying something like, I was the first to arrive. I realise that my mirrors are all over the place. They're kind of strange mirrors, they're really low down, so they get my arm in the way a bit too much. Not, yeah, not huge. 
fan of those whether they sort of move around a little bit more that's a bit better right let's try it out so does it tell me what time it is oh it is anyway bottom right there we go 12 19 so i've got about an hour oh, i don't know where to go but they just said anywhere you like for an hour ah oh, shit it's hydraulic clutch and i'm going to blame that also the brakes in the back are nice and uh, aggressive shall we say Got to factor in that stupid traffic to get that the other way. So this is the uh, the R1250 GS Adventure, the big one. We've got the big uh, panniers on this as well. So we've got the screen all the way up. I still feel a bit of wind noise and that sort of thing, but uh, again, it's better than on the 650 without a doubt. It's smooth in a way that the 650 isn't. Oh, what a lovely engine. I haven't opened it up yet, I need to find some uh, some roads around which to do that, but... Uh, the gearbox is smoother. I mean, I know these are known to be a bit agricultural as well. You know, all, all the BMW big engine bikes are a little bit, but compared to the 650, the gear changes are like a hot knife through butter. Very nice. So yeah, the... Uh, I wouldn't say no to a free one of these, certainly. Um, this isn't a review, of course. It's not a review. Um, I was going to just ask them honestly, you know, hey, I, I normally, if I go on a ride, I just put my camera on for posterity, for the occasional knobhead, you know, jumping in front of us at the lights and, you know, people pulling out without looking and all that sort of stuff. Um, so, you know, I just tend to film. Is that okay? And they just sort of basically chucked me the keys, showed me the buttons and said, off you go. They didn't question the fact that I got a GoPro on my helmet. So I just sort of forgot to mention it, really. So this seat at the moment is in the low position. I'm not struggling to touch the floor at all, but I could go a little bit higher, but it's not, it's not low. But then it's the Adventure, and that is every, every mode on the Adventure is just that little bit higher than on the normal version. So it kind of makes sense, doesn't it? So uh, I'm going to aim to be back by about one, because I know that traffic around by the place is a bit awful. The insurance is for an hour. So if I'm not back, I'm not insured. That's a bit tricky. It does have a quick shifter, so you can change without using the clutch. Not between first and second, but I think outside of that, you're all right. Maybe I'm going the wrong way here. Maybe I'm going too far towards the city. I should be going around some nicer roads. They didn't give me the sat-nav. I never thought to ask, but I don't know where I'm going. This uh, display thing here, I mean, it's, it's really nice. I mean, in direct sunlight, it looks like it's kind of painted on or something. There's no real glare to it. It's very, very bright, very easy to see. I'm surprised, given how clever it is, why is the sat-nav separate? It seems to me like they should have a, like a little sat-nav thing, like a phone map or something, like Google Maps type thing built into it. And that'd be really easy to do, but no, they don't. So I don't know, it's a bit strange. So I always wondered with these, like with the, you see the, the long way down, the long way around, and they're an off-road on a big GS, and you've got a, a, a big single plate dry clutch. And I always think, surely, you know, you get to a bit of a rocky bit and you feather the clutch a bit, within five minutes your clutch is burnt, surely, but uh, maybe they're not so bad. I know they are big clutches, so maybe they can take it. But I think as of what, 2017 or something, they actually switched over to a wet clutch, interestingly. I wonder if we can just cut through these lanes. I'm not test driving a bike to see how it handles in traffic, you know? It'd be almost rude not to use the bus lane, wouldn't it? I must say, it's an effortless bike to ride. It really is. The massive engine, this great big, you know, Messerschmitt type engine is, because uh, of the cylinders stick out sideways, it's all very low, which is great, makes it very stable nice low center of gravity companion considering how heavy a bike it is but compared to the uh the little 650 um the petrol tank is in the normal place and it's massive it's what like 33 liters on this i think maybe bigger than that it's a big big tank on this it's been the adventure bike you will have a bit more weight at the top um but it's just so balanced and just by pure displacement if i just let go of the throttle oh that engine braking like oh you can really feel it that is 
that is nice that is you, you've got a lot of control over your speed without even touching the brakes so you're not the bike isn't destabilizing itself so much you know you can just uh, rely on that engine braking very nicely so part of the limitation of my little 650 i said little i mean i'm saying it's little while i'm sat on this thing you know it's, it's a it's not a tiny tiny bike but it's just that you got on the motorway and it's happy at 60 65 if you wanted to cruise at uh, miles an hour it just doesn't want to be there uh, and i think these can just sit at you know plenty more than that and the revs are just lower and they'll just sit there all day long at 90 odd and just happily take it so you feel like you're never stressing it and that'd be quite nice so if it's me it's open on the back been able to just pick a direction off we go get some good miles covered and not really feel like it's taking its toll on you or the bike you know a bit bit bigger a bit more comfortable a bit but still capable of that uh, oh that looks like a nice gravel track let's go down there and see what's going on um so not not really a road bike person in, as much i like the adventure bikes definitely there is an image thing of people who buy a gs and never go off road i have taken one off road within about a week of owning it just about so i do want to do that and they're just they're so capable these things yeah, I mean, am I going to spend 20 grand tomorrow? No, I want to save up for a house deposit. I want to, you know, have a mortgage one day. And I don't, I don't want a mortgage, I want the house. The mortgage is kind of the necessary evil, but I want to be able to at least get to that point one day. Uh, oh, Morgan. Um, and, you know, if I go around buying lots of, spending lots of money on bikes, on finance deals, I'm never going to do that. But uh, maybe an older one of these, you know, he's telling me, do I want a bigger bike? Yes, yes, I do. I want the when it came to selecting oh which, which gs do you want to test ride i was like i want the biggest baddest bike you've got because why not yeah lovely lovely day for it i need to find some roads that aren't bloody 20 mile an hour speed limit see how it i mean it it chucks around like the 650 honestly it's like it weighs nothing it's so nicely balanced i have, I have zero comparison this is by a long long way the biggest bike i've ever ridden the second biggest bike i've ever ridden is my own 650 so i do not have lots of big bike experience i think if i go straight on here i think there's a nice road somewhere around by this great big recycling plant i think one of those uh uh oh what they're called uh, they're a company i can't remember the name and they, they do if your car gets written off odds are that's where it goes they auction it off for scrap and stuff they got a great big depot there somewhere there's a load of wind turbines and there's like a nice long road along there that you can kind of open it up a bit and uh test things out let's see if we can find that i really let, let the revs go a bit too low there and it was perfectly happy pulling away a lot smoother at the low end than the 650 the 650 below about three and a half thousand it's not happy at all this seems to pull whether i should or not it'll pull from about two you can get from you know 20 mile an hour to 60 in the snap of a finger you're, you're there cars just can't do it with a bike you can just oof 50 oof 70 get around somebody I'm still not convinced about this windscreen i think at uh at 70 mile an hour i think i'd be deafened maybe it's me maybe i just have a weird proportion or something and i'm always in the in the buffer zone I seem to be a magnet for slow residential roads. I can't seem to get out of them. There's definitely some, oh, it's a nice house, is it? Ooh, look at that. They have a gate and everything. They're sort of houses where they have gates and they also seem to have something worth keeping behind gates. That, that's the differentiating factor. Now, if I was on the 650, would I go around in traffic? Well, not when there's people coming the other way, but maybe I feel more confident. So it's got all the bells and whistles, isn't it? Won't really be needing the heated grips today, but uh, what's this do? Nothing. Oh, nice. Oh, right, right. I'm in road mode. Let's try dynamic. What does that do? Let's probably sharpen the throttle up a little bit. 
Um, I'm not interested in rain mode because when I mean, look at the sky, I don't know, it's like there's a secret mode called Pedro de la Rosa mode or something. I know he's a Formula One driver, isn't he? I always forget MotoGP riders, other than the obvious Francis Rossi. It is an easy bike to ride, very, very nice. If you're not scared of a big bike, and you shouldn't be really, unless it's a really rubbish one, like they're, they're big, but they're always balanced. They're not as scary as you think. Once you get over that, it's a big bike factor. This is so easy to ride. Some weird stuff around here. Village of Hallam. Mm. Welcome to careful drivers. What it sounds like in a, in a tunnel. Should we hear it? Ooh. That was a bit nice, wasn't it? <laughs> Did sound a bit, uh, a bit meaty. So I think it was somewhere down here. It might have been this road actually that I went on a Tesla test drive. Again, I didn't buy one of those. Um, but we were in the Tesla shop, in the, the shopping centre, playing around with the, the, the maps and the bells and whistles and stuff, and the, the sales guy just jumped in the back of the car and said, hey, do you want to have a test drive? Yeah, sure. And we went down some of these roads down here, and uh, he just said, like, just, you know, empty road, no one about, just, you know, naught to 60, just do it. And good God, those things fly. Very nice exhaust on the back as well, you really hear it. I will say, I've been running around it so warm and so slow with the visor up. With the visor down at this speed, I'm, I have not got any wind noise. This is actually very comfortable. So I do take it back. I wasn't testing it fairly. So uh, no, this is this is comfortable. Very nice indeed. I'm still not pushing it. I'd say unfamiliar bike, not the most experienced rider. Uh, I don't really know where I'm going, and I don't really want an insurance excess problem either. But, uh, but hey, you know, it's, uh, well, the brakes are uh, ooh, pretty good. Let's go right, eh? It's a pretty horrible junction, this. This is the kind of bike you could put the miles away and uh, no problem there whatsoever. So this bike comes with a quick shifter, allowing for clutchless gear changes in certain gears. I thought I'd better give it a go. Off the top all. Oh, that was, yeah. So you're on a mountain road or something and you sort of concentrate on the brakes and sort that thing out and you can just tread on the uh, the gear lever and just go down and, it, and it'll kick the revs up for you that's oh that's quite nice oh <laughs> i like that quick shifter actually i thought the quick shifter would be a real gimmick you know why the hell would you need that all the stupid thing to have i don't care it's actually really nice oh yeah well you know um this is they they don't know whether or not i'm about to uh you know drop 20k or so on one of these or whether i can but they never asked they just put an advert online and i clicked on it so i don't you know they've not done the hard sell in fairness to them um so I'm guessing they just think, well, if I like it, I'll maybe tell someone about it. Or if I can't afford one now, maybe I can in a few years' time. And you know what? It probably works. Now, there obviously is time for me to go and test ride someone else's bike. But as it is now, if I suddenly found myself with 20k to spend on, you know, a new big bike for going all over the world, there you go, shut up and take my money. This is great. I love it. Right. Final Cut Pro has an update a little while ago if you're on an M1 map where you can add these automatic tracking things. So you can have like a blur mask tracking a number plate if you don't want to be identified. Um, I, I should probably put that on the speedometer. Once or twice I might have just hit 51 in the 50, that sort of thing, which, you know, butterfingers. Genuine mistake, Your Honor. But, you know, let's be careful. Eh? Uh, Seven Beach. Seven Beach is not a beach. I did hear of some uh, friends who was getting off the train at Seven Beach to, to, to change train or something. And um, some, uh, I think it was some Asian students came up and said, oh, by the way, um, where's the beach? And they just gave them a look of sympathy and said, oh, God, I'm so sorry. Did, you know, there is no beach in Seven Beach. Seven Beach is like a industry port kind of 
there's a bit of shale going down to an estuary they're not a beach this is not a you know a holiday place so uh felt a bit sorry for them i think it's a hot one today it's not summer hot but it's like it's still march and i'm warmer than i thought it would be hot I haven't quite acclimatized it yet because the last few weeks have been freezing I mean, let's just, do we just go on the motorway and get back to the M5? Alright, M48 M5. Let's do the M5, I think, shall we? I've been lost around here before so many times. Alright, M48, here we go. This is our own lane, isn't it? Do you mean? Someone said to me, right, any bike, you go around the world, all sorts of, you know, challenges, what you're going to choose. I understand one of these. So far, I've not, I've not tried the KTMs, I've not tried the Harley Davidson power handle or whatever it's called. Apparently they're very good, and I, I don't know that they're not. Um, but so far, you know, this, this feels like it's uh, going to be quite tricky to beat. I was doing my uh, well, intro to the advanced riding course a couple of weeks ago, and all the instructors, all the people doing that, they all, they all ride these pretty much. And a lot of them would not have been seen dead on one of these a few years ago. And, you know, they rode whatever else they rode for years and years, and then eventually they sat on one of these, had a go. Wow, okay, it's, it, they are good. Um, bought one, never looked back. And you think, well, uh, that's, that's worth something, isn't it? Right, I think I want this right hand of these lanes here. Back to uh, BMW. From Bavaria. Well, this has been good fun. It really has. Oh, a bit of fresh air. And the engine braking, oh, I love a, love a good bit of engine braking. I'm thinking about it, aren't you? You're thinking about it. In the words of the late, great Terry Wogan, they're not all locked up yet. Hands kicking in. The newer ones are water-cooled. The slightly older ones were just uh, oil and air-cooled. Nowadays, there's no fins on the cylinders at all. It's all cooled internally. Um, the fan's gone off, that's always a good sign. I mean, he's done his job. The traffic's a bit of a pain, isn't it? All right, I'm gonna turn you off now. <laughs> Test ride over, and with a straight swap apparently out of the question, I had to jump back on my old 650. Okay, that was good fun. I much enjoyed that. Back on my old 650 now. Which uh, suddenly feels quite small. <laughs> yeah, you hear that clonk? 
of the gears a lot more in this there they have refined it a bit in the newer ones as you'd expect i mean it you know it is uh best part of 20 years newer so uh well, it's a bit of something wrong wrong with that pipe there should not be that much smoke coming out the back i guess his piston rings have gone yeah so that was the test ride uh, and that was really good fun um, it certainly wasn't a proper review, BMW didn't, they didn't, they didn't tell me not to film, so, you know, there's, there's no problem there. But yeah, it was a free test ride, it came up online, uh, you have a test ride and you get entered to a competition to win an off-road day, which is, yeah, I mean, where do I lose, right? So, I thought, yeah, sign up for that, and uh, yeah, it was good fun, so, probably done the job. Now I'm thinking, oh yeah, I do want one of those, even though I can't afford one, but, yeah, it probably does the job, doesn't it, for the marketing purposes, but uh, no, it was really good fun. So, uh, yeah, I really enjoyed that one, so... Uh, here we go, what's going on now? Well, I'm going to see if I get killed by a bus and then I'm going to carry on. Assuming I survive, which I think I have, then, uh, yeah. Catch you in the next one. Afterwards, I picked up Sophie and went along with a friend to get some fish and chips. Along the way, I had some time to muse about my thoughts on the BMW 1250 GSA. So the bike I tried out here, with all the bells and whistles on it, would cost probably upwards of £20,000. I don't have that to spend on a bike anytime soon. Uh, I want to buy a house one day and that sort of thing. So no, in a sense. But if I had loads of money, that much to spend on the bike, yeah, it was really cool. In fairness, I've not tried any of the competitors. There's the Ducati Multistrada, uh, Moto Guzzi V something or other, whatever that's called. There's the Harley Davidson Pan America. There's lots of competitors coming out of the woodwork more recently. Uh, I'd happily give them a test drive. Uh, if anybody owns a dealership and wants to let me ride one, absolutely. But I've not tried them yet, so it's not a fair comparison. But I really liked it. It was pretty good. It felt very well balanced. The weight was nice and low. I could happily ride that around the world. Um, so, thumbs up from me so far. One thing I am sold on, however, is that I definitely want to upgrade my F650 GS to a bigger version. Uh, the 650 will be for sale, it's a great bike, it's been pretty well looked after all its life, very very low mileage as well, lovely lovely bike, it's just for me, being quite tall, having sofa in the back and luggage, it's just a bit too small, so it's time to go for a bigger one. Internal monologue out of the way, we arrived at the chippy, scoffed down some fish and chips, and successful road trip down, I treated myself to a magnum. After some passers-by had finished admiring our bikes, it was time to head off home. No, yeah. There's yeah. a lot of uh, discussion. <laughs> All that remains to say is thank you very much for watching. I hope to do some more bike test rides in future and see you next time.